Joining us this morning is Janine Tornator, who's senior editor with Orbits.com. That's the online travel service, of course. And she's got some great travel ideas for us. National parks, but not just the famous ones like Yellowstone, but some of the less known ones. And specifically this summer, they're celebrating their 100th anniversary at the National Park Service. So where I understand one in the Midwest first. Yeah, we'll start with this is Isle Royale National Park in Michigan, although it's in the middle of Lake Superior, so you can actually access it from Minnesota or from Michigan, but only by boat or seaplane. This is probably one of the most remote national parks because there's no motor vehicles here. You really have to be adventurous and be ready to go and self-sufficient when you get on this island, but it's absolutely beautiful. It's only open from mid-April until October, so it's one of those places you have to visit in the summer, but doesn't get a lot of visitors, so you really do feel like you're in kind of the uh, you know wild when you're on this destination. There's over 150 miles of trails here. There's 36 campgrounds, um, lots of places to explore. So it's a really great option if you're in the Midwest and wanting to look for something a little more local this I think summer. You better pack some of that bug spray too. Yes, it sounds yes. like. But now a little further afield uh, in Washington. Where have you got for us there? So just two and a half hours outside of Seattle is the North Cascades National Park, a beautiful national park with just stunning scenery. And what's interesting about this one is just how diverse the ecosystems are here. So you go from the temperate rainforest to the dry ponderosas all within one national park. Um, a lot of um, areas that have been affected by, you know, the glaciers over millions of years. Um, and there are great things like the uh, Junior Ranger program for kids, which is in all the national parks, but there's some great ones here. They also have um, environmental learning centers here where you can actually take some courses while you're visiting. So some different interesting things to do in this national park. You can get hotels in Seattle in July from, you know, $233 a night throughout the summer. So a great option if you want that little day trip or a couple of days outside of Seattle. And of course, it's lovely weather at this time of the year there. But now thinking about a little bit warmer down on the south of the West Coast in California. Yes, here we have the Channel Islands National Park, and this is just off the coast of Southern California, outside kind of the Ventura, Santa Barbara area, so you can stay there locally um, and go visit these for a day trip or a couple of days. You know, these are um, made up of five islands, and, and there are also their ocean environment around there, so a great, you know, place to go hiking, snorkeling, diving. You can even do boat tours, and which is beautiful during whale season, so a lot of different ways to experience this beautiful national park that's, again, much less traveled than some of the big ones. Hotels in the Southern California California area around the Santa Barbara area from $182 a night this summer so you can do it fairly affordably. And of course you've got all the Southern California attractions like you mentioned. Absolutely so many people are already going to this area maybe doing the theme parks in the Los Angeles area so what a fun way to see a national park while you're there. And finally uh, once again a little more off the beaten path in Arkansas. Yes, here we have the first national river that was designated in 1972. This is the Buffalo National River. Um, really, you know, beautiful river to see some of this beautiful scenery in the Arkansas area. Um, it runs over 135 miles. You can canoe it, you can raft it. There's a lot of wilderness areas with great hiking trails off of them, places where you can camp. Um, so a, another wonderful way and different way to see another region of the country. Um, they even have a ghost town here that was an old zinc mining area, so lots of different things to do. Well now one actually I missed I jumped ahead there but let's talk about it and it's been made famous in movies Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Devil's Tower. Yes. You know, Wyoming's really known for the big national parks, so we'll be very busy this summer. Places like Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Park. Not as many people head over to the eastern side of the state where there's Devil's National Monument. It was actually the first designated national monument in the country. Um, it, you'll see a lot of people rappelling and hiking up. It's over, or, sorry, rappelling and climbing it. It's over, maybe not hiking up it. It's over 1,200 feet tall of volcanic formation. It is absolutely stunning. Um, and there's, you know, the Black Hills nearby there so it's a great another great area of the country to check out. Janine I want to thank you for joining us today. I think I'm going to go visit a national park for sure this summer. Great.